Morning everyone, welcome to Devil's Garage. Right, today I'm going to do a review. It's very, very rare. I don't do reviews because it's more about the garage for us. And what I wanted to do was to review something that I've been sent by a very good friend of mine. Now, I got a contact from Jim Payne. That's his username on his YouTube channel. I want you to check it out. Jim Payne is... Um, he signs himself on his tube as old fart on a motorbike, which I think that's what caught my attention because that's kind of me, that is. I love it. And Jim's uh, a, a clever sage. He does vlogging, and I want you to look at his channel and read those things and, and to enjoy that. But something else Jim did. He sent me uh, an email and just said, look, back in the day, I used to work as a, a knitwear technician or a knitting technician. Now, that is not your nan with a degree. That is somebody who actually works in the textile industry and designs fabrics. It's a proper, proper career. Way before we started importing everything from China and India, all our clothing these days all comes from the Far East, but mostly, pretty much, back in the day it was made in Britain. We had a massive textile industry. In fact, go back to the Industrial Revolution, textile mills, all that sort of thing, it all came from here in the first place. And Jim was involved in that industry. He had some serious skills. He's moved on, he's doing other things now, so obviously he wanted to use his skills to his best advantage. And what he did was get involved in motorcycle wear. Now this particular item that Jim has designed, it's not just a garment. He just didn't just design the garment. What Jim's design is, it's his baby, it's his little brainchild, is the actual fabric. What Jim's done is he's designed a fabric that's a mixture of cotton and polyester. Well, you know, what's different about polycotton? We all know that, we have polycotton sheets on the bed. Exactly, we have polycotton. Polyester and cotton has been mixed for a long time. But what Jim's done is something different. He's used his skills, he's brain thought it, and he's come up with an idea of putting a layer of polyester inside a layer of cotton. That's as I understand it. I'm not gonna go into too much technical detail because I don't quite fully understand it. What I do know is that from what I read, it makes sense. Quite simply, polyester wicks the cold, the heat rather, away from your body. If this is all because today we're going to go out, I'm going to try this out today. It's 31 degrees in here. Without his head. <laughs> his head fell off. It's 31 degrees in here, which is what, 84 uh, at the moment. And it's going to be about that today. And I've decided what I'm going to do is check this out. I don't believe in just promoting something because it's good. I only believe in promoting it if it works. If I say to you, I want you to check this out, I want you to buy one. When you get it, I want you to think, damn right, that works. He was right. Not load of rubbish. I'm not just bigging up my mates. I don't do that. If I say something, I want it to be real. I want it to work. So this today is a review. Uh, it's now 10 o'clock. We're going to meet the Idiot Collective at 11 o'clock at the usual place and then we're going for a ride out on the bikes for the day. And I'm going to stick the levers on. It's going to be 80 degrees. One thing we all know about is when you put levers on in this weather, you get sticky and wet and clammy inside them because you sweat into the leather and it doesn't really go anywhere because leather is waterproof. Okay, cows don't leak, but yes, they do perspire. Whereas when once it's a, a skin on your, on your jacket, you're gonna get clammy and wet inside it. No moisture passes through that. You might get vents and stuff, but that's really, they don't do it. They don't, it's pathetic. So I'm gonna put full levers on today, which is a break from tradition. I normally have a little bit of textile or just jeans or something in this weather, but it's gonna be 85 degrees today. I'm gonna to wear full leathers and I'm gonna put this inside. Jim's thinking in this is that the moisture comes away from your body through the through the polyester and it's stored in the cotton. That's the nucleus of what this is about. The cotton itself holds, apparently according to what Jim said, two to three times its own weight in moisture. So the cotton gets wet and it stays there, but the polyester sends it through. So the moisture goes through the polyester, away from your skin, is held off your skin, and then it stores in the cotton that's bonded to the other side. Now that's not very different really to the way a, a baby's nappy works or diaper if you're in America. Quite simply, modern babies sanitary wear, the moisture touches the surface. There's a, a, a surface on there that wicks the stuff through and locks it away from the skin so it's not touching the skin. I've read some reviews. What people are saying is that they don't even feel wet or sweaty at all. Now I'm standing in this conservatory in the sunlight and I'm already sweating. So I'm gonna have a quick shower. I'm gonna cool down. I'm gonna put the suit on and then we're going to see whether it actually works. Okay, stick around, stay tuned. So, the idea behind this is it's cool wear. Uh, just give us a label pen. There you go. Right, it's, it's marketed as Becca Cool Wear, which is the product itself, and it's designed to keep you cool um, rather than warm. But obviously, it's a layer, so when the 
cold weather comes, it's going to be all now already straight away. He, I've got to say, when I held this up, it was too long. It seemed quite tall. I'm five foot eleven and uh, eighty kilos, just under thirteen stone, whatever that means, and that's a large. Now they seem to come in large, medium, and small. Um, this size seems great because remember, although it's got a little bit of room, you are leant forward on your sports bike. You need to cater for your riding position. Um, and I'm quite impressed that already, actually, it just feels comfortable. Just, and I'm not saying it, I'm not going to make any statements today that are uh, not correct and true. Just putting straightforward levers on, straight over the top. I'm standing here in 84, 85 degrees temperature now. I'm warm, but obviously I'm not clammy. That's the point. You are going to be warm because you're in a hot environment, but... By no means do I feel so clammy or sweaty. I know for a fact now, forehead sweating me. Really. Oh. It is hot, but I don't feel in any way uncomfortable. You know, like when you sort of move your knee, you get that sticky feeling that your levers are sticking to you inside. Not at all. It is pretty good, but we're going to see. We've got a pretty long day out. I'm just going to wear this as it is under the levers, and I'm going to test it to see exactly whether it's any good or not. Okay. Okay. Let's see how the day goes. Right, I've got to say that we've done about 10 miles now. It's uh, three quarters of an hour later. Now, I left home and because I've been in the conservatory and it was about 85 degrees in there, I was sweltering, I really was. I was actually sweating into it quite profusely. And I thought, is it going to work or is it not? So we left the house. As I came out of the house, all the, the vents on the jacket, all the vents on the jacket sat in cold area. And I was absolutely freezing. I actually felt physically cold, quite cold. Like I stood in a cold shower for about three minutes. Now, I know the soup is wet inside. I know this was moist. I know it was getting wet. And because you know, I was sweating into it. As soon as about seven, eight miles had gone by, it started feeling warmer. And now, even under the arms, it's not wet at all. So I guess that was the drying process, the evaporation process, which is working. So it shows it initial outset, first 10 miles, it's brilliant, can't believe it. So we'll see how the rest of the day goes. Cup of tea? Cup of tea, that's a cup of tea. Should we have a cup of tea? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get the tea in. Here we are. Now, long day out with the collective, lots of stupidity. The suit has done amazingly. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's been a hot day. It's clouded over now. Uh, haven't been wet or sweaty or uncomfortable all day long. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, the traffic along this bit of road here, which we're looking at, this is constant. This is the A31. It's just starting to chuck it down the rain now. And all the others are coming along here in about the next two or three minutes. I'm going to get a camera out of the rain. Come on, film you bastard, it won't focus. Ah, oh, bastard won't focus. There he goes. Fanny pit stop pulling in. <laughs> Come on! And running in. Run! <laughs> Can you get my keys out? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Right, there we are, the end of a very long day. I've had this on now for about 10 hours with leathers over the top. I expected during the day to be hot and clammy and uncomfortable, but it has been nothing but just the same as a normal ambient day. This has been like wearing a t-shirt underneath your leathers, except with a difference. I've never felt wet or damp or sweaty in any way. We left this morning, uh, it was about 85 degrees, having spent time in here, getting it all on and I expect it to feel uh, hot and uncomfortable but the, the way the cloth is meant to work it wicks the moisture away and stores it in the cotton out layer now not at any point have I felt moist or sweaty or anything today this has just felt like a slightly thicker undergarment than you might normally wear if you normally wear a t-shirt under your levers then this is perhaps a little bit thicker than that and obviously it's a one piece as well which is great because it doesn't come untucked at any point you know what it's like when you lean forward your t-shirt comes up so that gives it another another dimension it's a nice romper a nice one piece and it works it really really works 
Now I don't know a great deal about the technology of it, but as Jim tells me quite simply, inside the fabric is polyester. It removes that, like I said earlier today, and puts it in the cotton outer layer and it stores it there. With my leathers, the experience this morning was quite weird. We left, got out the front, pulled away on the Hayabusa, and I felt hot, so hot. I knew I was gonna start pouring with sweat. In fact, my neck was hot at the back, forehead was sweating, my gloves were sticking to my hands, and I just had to get moving. All the vents in my levers, all the, the perforated sections, the little vents in the shoulders started doing their job once I started moving, and that meant that cool air started going in. And it was quite unusual. That's when I realized that this garment is actually quite special. What it does, I felt chilled, actually cold. It's 85 degrees out, but I had the sensation was all over, right down through the stuff coming through inside the trousers. Started to feel a proper sensation of being chilled, actually very cold. Probably 10 miles after that, I started to feel warm again, just comfortable. Because what was happening was the, the process of evaporation was going on. Cool air is going into my leathers and it's drying out the cloth. And as it's dried it out, at the end of the day, it's still dry. Even under the arms where you know you're going to get wet, honestly, it's completely dry. I've suffered in the back area where you always get the back pad on your back. The back always gets wet inside your levers. Not a bit of it. You do feel a moisture there, but 10 minutes later, it's gone. It just evaporates away. So this idea of it wicking the, the moisture and the heat away from you, it does work. It is a cool suit. It keeps you cool. And I love it. So the thing that's come to mind is... For something like this, we went to another bike shop today, we went to have a little look around, and they do clothing. It's one of the Helmet City chain. And we had a look around at some new lids and bits and pieces, looking for anything that's in a bargain basement, but mid-season there's nothing. But we did see some cool wear, so I was just quite interested to look at it. Now, I saw some garments in there. They were just garments that you wear underneath your rucker or underneath your leathers that are supposed to be both thermal and basically do what this does to extract the moisture from your skin, get it away from your skin and lock it away so you feel comfortable and your gear moves over you without sticking. And that stuff was 75 pounds, was that right Penny? Just for a top. It was a top 75 pounds and the, the bottoms were about 50 pounds. So you're looking at over 100 pounds for a suit like that and that's not uncommon by any means. So I, I equated it to this, I didn't talk to the guy in the shop because I'm not interested in that. This suit, it's a little bit larger than I might have bought, but I found that actually that's a good thing, because for me, when you're leaning forward, you're not gonna get this business. It sits exactly where I like. I like the cuffs in my gloves. It gives that feel, especially, you know, remember, in the winter, you're gonna wear this, it's gonna be another warm layer, isn't it? You can put another warm layer over the top of this, and it's gonna keep you completely warm. It's gonna add those warm layers up, but yet, when you do get a little bit too warm, it's gonna get that warmth away from you. Any moisture that's gonna come out of your skin, naturally, that you can't help, it's just gonna lock it away in the cotton, and you can wash it afterwards. But I expected a garment like this to be over 100 pounds, because they are a one-piece full suit like this that goes inside your leathers. I expected it to cost more than that. Now, I'm not gonna do the market traded thing and say, what do you think this costs? But I'm gonna say, what do you think this costs? I looked at this and thought it's possible this should be about 55, 60 pounds or more. So what do you reckon? It's none of that. Jim Payne sells these for roughly 25 pounds. Delivered. 25 pounds for a suit like this delivered. You've got to buy one. You've got to contact Jim. There's a link underneath and ask him for one. They come in small, medium, large and they come in this gray or there's a blue and there's a red. So you've got a choice as well. This is Jim's brainchild. Remember, this is not just a biker out there as has one of these whizzed up for his own good. No, this is a motorcyclist who's got skills of a knitting, what's it called? A knitwear technician, a knitting yeah. technician. He's actually a person who's, whose job it was to make fabric, fabric that then went on to make clothing by designers. He didn't have these knocked up by someone on their sewing machine. This is a proper brainchild. This is his IP. This is a product that he's invented. To try and break into the retail market with a product that you've designed, honestly, it's a nightmare in itself. I'm going to be contacting Jim. I'm going to get myself one, another one. So I've got two, one for the wash, one clean, and I'm going to wear them all the time during the winter, going to work, and obviously Penny's going to get one for Penny as well. So there we are. Check out Jim's channel, Becca Coolware. There's a link underneath as well to a review on this, so don't just take my word for it. Becca Coolware, that's the product that Jim has designed. This is a British biker, I say it again. He does vlogs as well. He's an old school biker, my kind of bloke. Check him out, look at his vlogs, and buy yourself one of these suits. You can't afford not to. Come on, £25. That's not even a night out, is it? That's not even a pair of gloves. Right? Take it easy, ride safe. I'll see you next time.